Welcome back to the Realism Engagement. Before we jump into our third segment, let me remind you guys, if you're interested in getting a career in the game design or, or video production, esports production industry, go ahead and check out Full Sail University. There's a lot of different places to get an education in different fields such as audio engineering, 3D animation, video production, game design. But Full Sail University has some great programs of its own. Go to www.fullsail.edu slash MLG for more information on their different programs in these areas. Full Sail University is the official education partner of the Major League Gaming. Our third segment is going to be switching it up from PvT into Zerg versus Heron. We'll talk about uh, basically the hammer style, which which doesn't have any dancing, just has to do with um, just using, there's different tools to use in every situation. Sometimes the simplest tool is the best one. First we'll talk about playing against a high econ, low tech Zerg is Terran. Then we'll talk about when it's important to seize the moment or seize the day, although that's technically a mistranslation of Carpe Diem, but most people would say it that way. Um, then we're going to go to a, a simple, perfect ZVT game plan when you're ahead. If you just, when you're ahead, you want to make sure you can win that game because Terran can be pretty obnoxious and draw playing minds if you let him stick around for too long. So we're jump this game to the nine minute mark. And uh, a couple things we're going to look at is basically the builds of these players, right? So we can see Ghost User is going to open up with a bunch of roaches. He's going to try to be annoying, uh, but he's not going all in with this, right? He's already you know, 52 drones, and he's building a bunch of 52 workers, getting workers behind it. What he's doing is he's using the roaches to push the Terran back, and then while Terran's pushed back, he's going to try to get a very high econ. And he's going to be a little bit behind in upgrades, right? But the advantage is he's going to have very high econ. The Terran will be a little more hesitant to take the third base because he's worried about time attacks. And he's even taking a very fast fourth base. So, of course, this isn't an all-in. It's not going to do anything against the side of defense. There's a Marauder behind a the wall. There's too much damage output. Kill going to kill drone back away. And notice what Hart did that was so important. He sent the Reapers and the Hellions around behind the Roaches. They're not going to help out against the Roaches. What they will help out is if Speedings are rallying and behind it turn to Baning, so you can pick off those guys as a rally. Also, you can identify if it's an all-in or not. So Hart being very heads up, identifying, no, it's not all in my opponent's taking the fourth base. And now he's in a situation where he's identified what's happened. He knows, okay, he got a bunch of Roaches, and he's taking a fast fourth base. His tech isn't going to be that fast, right? But he's going to have a lot of economy. You can see he's up to 70 drones right now, making two more, four more. You know, uh, he's, he's going to have a lot of drones, basically, is, is what we're looking at. And so you can say, okay, with four hatcheries at least, in fact, he, he might have a macro hatch in a bit, but right now it's four hatcheries at the very least he has. He's going to have a lot of larva with four mineral lines, a lot of income, so he can field a very large army. The disadvantage, well, right now, what does he have to defend a drop? I mean, nothing. I mean, he, he, he can defend it, but you can still be annoying. There's no way he can punish drop play. There's no way he has mutilus. So ideally, you'd be doing drops. Unfortunately, the starport didn't have a reactor ready for it, so he's slowing down his drop tech. So he can't do too much with drops. Uh, but the other thing you can do against an opponent who has, who has low tech is you can say, okay, maybe he can feel a large army now, but he's going to be behind an upgrade. So if I was perfect on the upgrades, if I hit 2-2, if I had my 2-2 started right now because I'm already 1-1, I might have the potential hit a very strong 2-2 timing, when maybe he'll be maxed and I'll be at 170, but I'll have such a higher quality of units, I can use very, very strong timing with like five or six siege tanks. He won't really have a good way to deal with the siege tank count then. Hit a really strong 2-2 timing. What you don't want to do is try to do some like funky timing where you just have a couple tanks and a few marines, and you know your opponent has going to be able to fuel a lot of roaches and speedings, and you might get run over. So unfortunately, Hart is, is trying to go for this timing um, but because Ghost User can field such a large standing army like we just went over because he has the fast fourth base and a lot of economy, a lot of larva, we're in a situation where, yes, Heart's army looks scary, but Ghost User is going to have no problem beating this in a straight-up fight. And, I mean, the fact that the tanks are siege double late just adds to the dilemma. And as soon as he loses those tanks, yes, you know, uh, Ghost is going to back away, but with the rallied reinforcements here, all these speedings coming in, there's no way this attack's going to work. He's going to have to back away. And this goes to the next point. Okay, he, he's doing these small attacks with Siege Shanks, but Siege Shanks are his core anti bayonet unit. So as he goes through these drops, in fact, he might lose another Siege Shank right here. In fact, he, he will lose that guy. Um, and back was thinking about saving his side to back away. He's going to have this problem where as the game goes on, he's able to produce a lot of bio very quickly, but he still only has a single factor and he's still building Siege Shanks. So the bio can be used to do some really annoying drop play. But what Ghost User can realize is he can say, okay, my opponent lost a couple Siege Shanks. What that means is that if he tries that once more, if he does that again, if I keep the factory unit count low, 
is going to make him much weaker against a mass banning attack. I know he doesn't have too many Widow Mines because he, he opened with a couple Siege Shanks. And unfortunately, I mean, he, he's probably figured this out by now, but at bio count, there wasn't a fast second factory. And so again, Hearts going out for this small push, but he doesn't have an upgrade advantage. And again, Ghost User in a straight up engagement early on can feel the massive uh, superior numerical army. Eventually, this type of army right here, what's the disadvantage of this? Well, because it's so speedy and banning heavy, as time goes on, the disadvantage is, is going to be Okay, if he can feel, if he can get a, a lot of Widow Mines, a lot of Siege Shanks, he can get a large army of his own. Speeding, baning in mass numbers loses to a tuner, to a maxed out Terran army. This, this this army doesn't work as well once the Terran is maxed out as well. But in these mid game engagements, it's perfect. So Hart's kind of playing right into Ghost User's game plan right here when he tries this aggression, and again losing another one of those key factory units. Now that Ghost User identified that his opponent has been using his key factory units, he's going to be much, much, much weaker to a mass speeding baning attack. All he has to do is he can, he can go right now, or he can wait to morph a bunch more banings. Most players are going to morph more banings and go in and try to do some great damage. And because it's just bio, what happens? As soon as Ghost User runs, he has to kite away. Now, ideally, what Ghost User does, he says, you know what, when my opponent has to kite away, I can just run back, kill the SCVs, force it to lift, and then retreat again, and keep doing this over and over and over again, and he'll never get a third base ever. Unfortunately, Ghost User, Ghost User gets a little bit ahead of himself, tries to end the game entirely by chasing the army, and he gets stuck fighting these choke points where the speedings and Banings have a really hard time getting up there. The Marines have a great choke and, and uh, are able to fight very well. So he still is able to, to kill a lot of SCVs and get damage done, but he's lost too many units to the point where he can deny the third yet again. But going forward, yes, he didn't end the game, like maybe he could have, but the key thing is now he's ahead. And when you're ahead, it's a pretty simple Zerg, a Zerg strategy, right? Uh, he's already at Hive Tech, right? Because he, he, as Zerg, you don't want to layer tech too much. You want to keep teching. If you have a bunch of bases, building infestation pit is not that big in expense. Even if you just want the 3-3 upgrades, it's great. But if you're ever ahead of Zerg, um, hopefully you're Hive Tech. If, if you're not Hive Tech, you're actually probably not that far ahead. Um, you want to focus on one simple thought. Okay, all I have to do is deny his fourth base. Terran can be really tricky, set up these cool defenses where it's hard to do that with speedings and banings if they set up the tanks well. But if I get Ultralis, there's nothing that can stop a swarm of Ultralis bearing down on my opponent. He can be cutesy, he can trade efficiently with some great defensive setups, he can kite backwards from Ultralis and trade efficiently, but he can't just straight up stop a horde of Ultralis from running over a base. So if I'm ahead, I don't need to worry about trading super efficiently. What I need to do is just focus on slamming down that, that fourth base of his every time he sets it up. That's exactly what he's going to do. The Ultralis Cameron's done. He's going to build a lot of Ultralis. And he's setting up the fifth base as well. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the game plan. It's use the hammer. You don't have to be fancy. You don't have to do any crazy harass. Yes, it would be nice to be running in banings and speedings to the third base. That can be cute and fun. But when you're ahead of Zerg, stick with the simple plan. Get the Ultratus, defend with you know, the speedings and banings until you get those up. And then, of course, ideally you can have Infestors too, but even without Infestors, it's a pretty simple game plan. You just grab a bunch of Ultratus, and you go ahead, and whenever you try to set up a fourth base, you say, you know what, I'm just going to kill it. Yes, maybe I'm not going to be efficient. If he keeps kiting backwards, Widow Mines will hurt me. I'll lose one, two, three, four Ultratus to his uh, kiting bio. But the important thing is, yes, I may lose these units. But if I can stop him from dropping mules at that fourth base, he'll mine out, right? Yes, this isn't efficient, right? I'm, I'm bleeding Ultratus for killing very few units. But all I have to do is kill a planetary, and it's fine, right? I can remax almost instantly. If you look at the economy, I'm going to be ahead, right? I've almost doubled his economy because I'm on five base versus three. And really, it's not five base versus three because the mains are going to be gone. It's really four base versus two. And if he forces a Terran to drop their mules on, on one of their two bases, pretty soon it's going to be like four bases to zero. And that's the goal. It's not about being efficient. It's about keeping it simple, throwing ultras at their fourth base over and over and over again until they just have to give up because they're starved out. And that's always a priority. If your opponent's doing fancy drop play, yes, you want to make sure you try to stop that. Yes, you want to have a few speedings, try to run down those drops. But it, it's okay to take damage from drops. The worst thing to do in this position as Ghost User is to send your ultras chasing after drops and turtle up and say, I need to hold my five bases. Because, yes, it's nice to hold your five bases, but you can lose one. You can drop down to four bases, it's fine. As long as your opponent doesn't stabilize their fourth, you're going to win in about five minutes.
It may not be the fastest win, but pretty soon, around the 25 minute mark, they're going to be mined out of three bases and not going to continue the game. So it's okay to take some damage to these drops, it's fine. The key thing is just continually deny the fourth base over and over and over again. And so Hart knows he has the weaker army. He's trying to do guerrilla tactics, he's trying to be annoying. Yes, he's going to kill his hatchery. Or actually, he's not even easy. He's, he's going to hurt, he's going to back away, he can try to kill later. The most important thing is you just sit around, you defend, but you always keep an eye on this fourth base. You periodically send a chain chain there, a speeding there, send something there. And as soon as your opponent takes it again, you go ahead and you just kill them. And so that's actually what happens this game. Uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to fast forward this X8 a bit. He's going to be annoying. He's not going to chase him up to the third base. He's just going to check on the fourth. No fourth, back away. Yes, he lost the fifth to a drop. No problem. It's not a big deal. As long as you hold your four bases, that's fine. You can even lose the fourth. At this point, he could lose his fourth and his third. He'd still be fine if he just kills this fourth base. Because he has so much money banked up, it's totally fine to lose some bases. You can just rebuild them. Just rebuild the hatchery, you know, uh, restabilize their defense. Priority is always keep killing that fourth base. And so now Hart's going to try to make the last stand. And you know what? Even if he wins this battle, um, with, with Fungal, he probably can't. But even if he, he wins this battle, if he loses the fourth base, Ghost you can just keep throwing units at him. And at this point, right, what's he mining, right? His third's pretty much done. His natural's done. So even if he wins the battle, as long as you kill that plant here, you're going to be happy. That's the main goal there. But of course he doesn't, so he GG's. Now, here, here's, a, here's a tricky question, right? So... One thing is, if you're a Terran player, right, and you're in that situation where, okay, my opponent's way stronger than me, I need to get a fourth base, then maybe I can win the game with some cool drop play. So, I'm doing cool drop play, I'm, you know, attacking over here with drops, um, I'm attacking, you know, down here with drops, I'm being really annoying. I can really hurt his economy pretty well with the drop play, but, how do I set up a fourth base? Well, the middle one's going to be easy for his Zerg to attack, ideally as a Terran player, you go ahead and you take this bottom base, right? That's where the money is at. The reason it's there is because for the Zerg to go across to the bottom, they're going to have a very hard time defending this section of the map. This top left is going to be very, very difficult for a Zerg to defend. So as a Terran player, ideally, instead of taking this middle one, if you're behind and you have Ultralis, it's, it's hard to set that up. Yes, you can, you can take the middle one with, like, fly your orbital from your main there. So every time they attack, you lift it up. But your planetary, your, your key fourth, you really want to defend for good should be at the bottom right. As a Zerg player, if your priority is killing that bottom right, what do you do? It's quite simple. As a Zerg player, let's say you do red for the Zerg. You say, you know what? I know I can't deny the bottom right and protect the top left very easily. Maybe I can put some stack defense there. It'll help a bit, but those bases are going to be hard to hold. I can't can count on holding them. You just take this space down here. Boom. You take this space, and then as long as, I mean, hopefully you can hold this space too. As long as you can hold that base, and, and, and this bottom base, you can quite easily attack multiple locations, and you can even go ahead and, and kill their third if it gets on to uh, another situation like that. So the Zerg player, just focus on denying the bottom right. If it's too far away, consider expanding towards your opponent so you can attack and defend at the same time. That's always going to favor the, the, the player who wants the bases closer to each other is a player with a slower, stronger army. Ultratists are like that against a player with medevacs. They can zip around the map with medevacs. They can be annoying. But in a straight-up fight, Ultras are going to smash your army. Maybe the Heavy Marauders, equal numbers, you'll lose. But this is from a situation if you're ahead of Zerg, this is how you want to play. If you know you can just out-overwhelm your opponent as long as you can pin them to a location. And that location is going to be their fourth base. For their fourth bases, just keep attacking it. Dying that fourth time and time again. So this, this, uh, this wraps up our, our third segment. But a couple key things to remember. As a Terran player, if you don't want this to happen to you, to you fall behind in the first place, Keep those factory units alive. The factory units are the most important thing as a Terran player in the mid game against Zerg. If you have a lot of Widow Mines, it's very easy for you to keep taking more bases. It's very difficult for the Zerg to just overwhelm you with, with superior numbers. Same thing with Siege Tanks. If Hart didn't lose, I think he lost five of his first six Siege Tanks. If he had six Siege Tanks, he never would have lost that third base. That mass attack on the third would have gone blown up to shreds, right? Ghost Eater would never tried it, of course, but. If you keep those factory units alive, it's very easy to stabilize three bases. Once you stabilize three, you can produce enough to go and put aggression and take a fourth behind it. So keep those factory units alive as a Zerg player. If you're ever ahead, just keep it on the fourth base with Ultras. Ultras are the best anti planetary unit in the game, pretty much. Keep using them. It's okay if you lose some. It's okay if you're not efficient. If you lose five Ultras for the planetary because there's Marauders behind it. If you're ahead in bases, you can afford it. The Terran cannot afford 
to not have a fourth base as the game approaches the 20 to 22, 23 minute mark. Straps up our third segment. We'll take a short break and be right back with a Q&A.